Letter from my grandfather to me. In the death march of Bataan, I have just been recruited as U.S. Special Forces as my only way of survival out of the mountains of northern Mindanao. The Japanese took an offense to camp in Luzon, which forced troops to be cornered in a place called Bataan. Surrendering to the Japanese, both the Americans and Filipinos have laid down what was left of their weapons. The Japanese have then took prisoners of war and marched us off 55 miles north, another 25, then an additional 6 miles. Men around me were whipped, robbed, beheaded for not doing what was asked. They then had an appetite for blood, but impatience were loud in their stomachs. We were ordered to walk barefoot with gravel, glass, and rock shattered on the ground. Each 20 minutes, a gunshot rings in my ears around me. So when I tell you to speak up, the screams of my people echo in the shallows of a white man's ignorance. The echoes of bullets is all I can hear. When I tell you to look harder, I can see the hope diminishing from your eyes. They took your faith, but they will never take your pride when I tell you to sit up straight. I am telling you to use your backbone that is built by my pride. Use this because this strength has come from my father and his father and the ones before you. When I tell you to speak, you scream. You roar tsunamis and push landslides with your tongue. Do not question my commands because this is how we survived. Do not question why your mother sits back home instead of back in the Philippines. Do not question me and your culture. I love. Listen. When I tell you to remember, I need you to never forget where you come from who you are, who I am. Before this, the jungle and mountains were our home. Ilungo ran through our bloods like the river a few miles to the north, swift and clean, where my ancestors have first tasted victory, not baptized with hatred, unlike the one that set their ships on our soil, unlike the men who stepped out of them that reeked with hatred. You carry royalty in your blood that they try to take, but here I am. I fled to America to find peace for my children, having their mother tongue ripped out from their mouths and English was shoved down their throats. Melanin was demonized and ripped out of your skin, but I need you to know. There is magic that is embedded in DNA. It is something that white men and women cannot fathom. They cannot replicate and use it to their advantage. They cannot be as poetic as your presence. They cannot appropriate it. But what they will do is demonize it. Now what is it, you may ask? It is your voice, your mind, your worth, your culture, and they will make it seem so ugly because they cannot take what you have like culture, but what they did do is hide it. They hid it in words like dark, afro, oriental, exotic, and what I need you to do is find it. Find the beauty and the truth behind the labels and own it. Ground it between your teeth, chew it up and spit it on the ignorance. Wear it like armor. Use it like a Napoleon war strategy and surprise them when they least expect it. Your words again will be demons inappropriate. Ghetto uneducated and this frustration has hurt you and I understand that you took a break but you need to bounce back because the sun kissed your skin so fire came with that melanin and it rests in your mouth but you forced it on the back of your throat trying to contain it but use the flames within you do not be afraid to use it so spit that fire burn the misogyny and racism embedded in the bones of hatred but my love if you keep this inside the fire will burn you inside out and the flames will hover in your lungs my love this will kill you so speak. Write till you burn pages and use every metaphor and simile to get your point across. But do not burn everything you touch, simply make it glow. So when I tell you to love, I am telling you to defy what they think of you. Build an army of crusaders to take back our home, our hearts, our culture. And I'm telling you to love. I am telling you. Do not hate who you are and where you have been because I did not walk shackles in my own home for you to be embarrassed of where you come from. So speak up.